Hello, my fellow Paladins gamers. Um, it is your boy Apache here, and uh, today we'll be starting a series called How to Paladins. And today we'll be talking about basics. Um, I hope I don't say anything that's, I guess, too advanced, because I want to say that for other videos. But I I'm going to try to get to the, the little things and try to explain to new players, or even players who have some experience but want to learn more competitive things or have a better understanding. Uh, because there's a lot of casual players out there who just play to play and... You know, maybe they want to win more and they don't understand why they're losing. Um, so I'm going to be explaining the game a little bit just to give you all a better understanding. Um, I am by no means, you know, a genius. I'm not a pro. I'm not even a semi-pro. I am working toward it, though. So one day y'all will see me playing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But with that, you know, with that to the side, um, I'm not the all-knowing, all-seeing being. Um, take everything I say with a grain of salt because they could be wrong, could be right. You know, it's my opinion. Um, but let's get started. So let's start off with what is Paladins? And that is a good question, right? What is Paladins? Well, it's a game. Well, what kind of game? Paladins is a hero shooter. Uh, this game not only takes game sense, but it also takes mechanics and immense teamwork. So if you think you can just run up in this game and just do whatever you want, I'm reporting you. I'm just kidding. But uh, this is, it's a fun game that takes a lot of teamwork, and that's why I enjoy it so much. So... If you're planning on playing competitively or you just want to get better, you got to be you got to be a team player, okay? All right, so let's talk about roles. There are four roles. That will be frontline, DPS, flanks, supports, and trust me, I know that sounds like a lot, but there's there's more. <laughs> um that's just the basic names of them just to put the characters in the categories. Um but there's another thing called sub roles, right? So you got the four main roles, which is just the general roles, but within those roles, there's smaller roles. So for example, you have your front lines, which are called tanks. So your main tank and your off tank, that's two types of tanks, but there's also a third and it's called a support tank. There's currently only one support tank in this game and it's called Torvald. Don't play him, he's terrible, he's getting nerfed. Let him sit in the graveyard, we don't like him. Um, but with other roles, there's also main DPS, flex DPS, main support, uh, off support, Main supports are good at sustaining a whole team, while off supports are better at, you know, bringing more utility, doing um, damage as well, a good amount of damage. So your pips, your groks, even your grovers, there's others. Ying's one now, um, but that's basically it. Um, when it comes to your main DPS, typically like backliners, people who can output sustained, sustainable DPS, and then you got your, you know, projectiles, your blasters who are like, kind of kill securers or just big burst damage or you know like area control stuff like that i think to i guess major um now let's talk about team comps but not just team comps but the objective of team comps right so if you're playing ranked you're playing competitively uh team comps are a big thing uh, uh there's a lot of people who it's just like meta 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 right but at the same time sometimes you're gonna get some non-meta picks in your in your comp and that's okay it's, there's nothing bad about it you know experiment try new things out um but the whole purpose of these roles that high risk has provided to you um is to build the team in which you cover all aspects of the game um basically it's to increase your team's chances of success so if we talk about a few team compositions you can go with standard which is two tanks two dps and when i say two dps you could throw a flank in there um and one support that's standard um, then you got triple DPS, which is three DPS, one tank support. You got quad DPS, which is four DPS, one support. Quad tank, which is basically the same thing, but four tanks. Um, you got goats, which is three tanks, two supports. You know, um, there's a lot of different compositions you can run. Uh, there is no end all be all. This is the comp you need to run, uh, composition like you know, composition wise. But there are some that have a little more advantages in certain areas than others. For example, if you're going to run quad tank, you're probably going to lack range. If you're going to run quad DPS, well, let's not say quad DPS because it's rarely right, but if you're going to run triple DPS, you're probably going to lack HP, you know? So with every comp you do choose, you're going to have some strength and some disadvantage, so you need to keep that in mind. Um, on to the next page of my notes. All right, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about roles now. We're going to talk about front lines. This is my favorite. I love front lines. Big beefy boys get to run around and do whatever they want. Not really. They kind of get bullied a lot, and you're gonna you're gonna get hit by a lot of volts. So just be ready for that. Make sure you buy your resilience. Um. So yeah. So let's talk about front line. So the job of a front line, which is a tank. Don't forget, 
And people will be like, what's a front line? Because you said tanks earlier. But what a front line is, it's a big boy, you know what I'm saying? And their job is to not only capture and contest the objective, but it's to create and maintain space for their DPS and support uh, to allow them to operate cleanly. Because if you don't, your support's going to be spamming buy, 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 because they don't want to play the game because they're always dead. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're going to run into that a lot, I promise you. Uh, but you, you'll learn to love it. Um, but basically, um, you want to give them space to operate cleanly. Uh, main tanks are better at controlling the point and standing on point for uh, long periods of time. Where off tanks are better built to be more aggressive and create space and peel for teammates and do a lot of fun stuff. Um, but yeah, they're usually more mobile and aggressive. And uh, they usually go in a, like a little pair with a DPS or an off support. And you know they just they just they just control like the off lane. Um, <clears throat> what else? What else? What else? What is there else to say about front lines? I already talked about Torvald, uh, but that's that's the gist of front lines in all reality. Uh, front lines are they're nice guys. Show them some love because they're getting shot in the face for you DPS. You know, all right. But with that being said, let's talk about DPS now. Damage players are a mixture of damage champs and flanks. You know we love our flanks. You know. Uh, Please buff flanks, please. <laughs> Some supports uh, can even fill this role uh, as a DPS. Uh, a DPS job is to utilize the space your tanks create for you uh, to output damage and get info and turn or create space for your tank as well. So basically your tank will give you some space and as a DPS, you know, you, you gotta also create space for your tank. Your tank can only go so far without the damage to follow up. Um, with that uh, out the way, there's also different types of DPS. There's hit scan DPS, there's blaster DPS, there's projectile. Um, each of those types have strengths and weaknesses, kind of like the compositions. Hit scans are really good at fighting at a range and just putting out sustained damage because wherever you click is where your bullet's gonna go instantly. Uh, blasters are good at area control and punishing grouped up teammates or group groupy comps, really brawly comps. And uh, projectiles are a little different than hit scans. When you shoot, you got to kind of guess where your shot's going. Um, and since it's a little harder to hit projectile shots, usually projectile champions do more damage. Um, so ba they're a little more rewarding damage-wise, but the shots, you know, there's a, there's a little skill curve. Um, but they're, they're just as fun as hit scans, you know. I love all the DPS. They're all really fun and really unique. Um, unless you want to talk about, you know, Vivian. Ugh. Um, but um, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's basically the the gist for the DPS. On to the next page, supports. Oh man, you gotta love the supports, dude. They keep every, they keep everybody alive. You know, they just sit back. They they drink their you know their lemonade and they they relax. No, that's that's not how it is. Supports get targeted. Supports get jumped on. So sometimes support sucks. <laughs> not gonna lie, support is a uh, it's a very important position. Uh, not only do you have to be smart and prioritize the right people when it comes to healing uh, but you need to make good calls you need to be very aware of your team and your surroundings um, unlike most games you know your support is not just a, a heal bot in this game uh, they're not called healers for a reason um, supports bring good damage and utility to the game uh, while also being able to kind of band-aid mistakes that your team makes uh, main, uh, like I said earlier main, main supports are really good at sustaining you know whole teams by themselves uh, and then you have off supports where they can heal, but they're mostly brung for their utility and their damage. Um, that's it for the rolls. Um, but um, we're going to talk about the item shop now. Now, the item shop is very important because as a new player, I, I see it countless times where people, they don't fully read the cards and they buy the wrong things. Um, there are four categories. You got your defense, which is your blue, your yellow, which is your utility, and your green, which is your healing. Um, and you also have your red, which is your offense. Probably the most bought items in the game. So you're going to want to pay attention because if you buy Bulldozer thinking it makes you do more damage to people, I'm going to uninstall your game. I've, I've, had, I've had it with the people saying, oh, it makes me do... No, Jimmy, no. Put the mouse down. Go to your corner. God damn it. Um, 
But let's talk about blue items. So blue items are your... <laughs> like, I can't take myself seriously. <laughs> blue items are your defensive items. You got Illuminate, Brazil, uh, Blast, Shields, and Haven. Illuminate helps you see invisible targets. Obviously, the more you buy it, the better it, it gets. Um, resilience will reduce the effectiveness... Effect I can't speak! God! Effect effectiveness of crowd controls and slows. Obviously, the higher you get it, uh, the better it is. Typically, you don't want to go over two. Two is probably your best bet. Unless you're just getting slaughtered by CSE, then go ahead and buy three. Um, Blast Shield will reduce uh, AoE damage on you. And Haven will reduce direct damage. Now, on to the yellows. Uh, Master Riding will increase your mount speed. Morale Boost will increase your ultimate charge. Nimble will make you a speedy boy. And Chronos will reduce your cooldowns. On to green. Kill to heal. Uh, getting an elimination will give you 300 health at level 1. Um, doesn't mean you have to kill the person. If you're a healer and you heal somebody and they get a kill, that counts as an, uh, an elim. An assist counts as an elim. If you kill somebody, it counts as an elim. Basically, if you if you kill somebody or you assist some someone in doing so, uh, you will get a heal proc. This is also affected by cauterize, so beware. Uh, you got life rip, which is basically um, the amount of damage you do. You will get a percentage of that HP back. So let's say I do 100 damage to an enemy. I will get 10%, both 10 HP back as long as I'm not cauterized. Rejuvenate. Rejuvenate is probably the best green item in the game. It'll increase the amount of healing you receive from your teammates. It's always a good buy. You can never go wrong with buying Rejuvenate. Uh, so buy it because it will help you as long as you have a support. If you don't have a support, don't buy it. It's it, That's a terrible idea. Um, veteran, people look. Some people look at this card as a meme. It it it, it kind of is a meme, but it's not. It definitely has its uses. I've definitely I have my fair share of buying veteran. Sometimes your support won't heal you or can't heal you. Sometimes you have a support where they it's just not possible for them to heal you. So you're going to have to heal out of combat. Um, and veteran will accelerate the amount of HP you get per second. So sometimes it's it's not a bad buy. It's very niche, but it's not a completely useless card. Um, and on to your reds. You got Bulldozer. And like I said, Bulldozer does not make you do extra damage to players. So if I catch you, Jimmy, buying that shit again to do what I just said it doesn't do. Listen, I'm not even going to tell you. I'm just going to do it. Um, but <laughs> Bulldozer increases damage done to deployables, pets, and illusions. What are those? And ours Ward. Nara's Wall, Imani's Dragon, uh, Io's Pet Dog Luna or Fo Luna or you know or Fox, whatever you want to call it. Um, what else? Barracks Turrets, Ying's Illusions. Those are things, and there might be more that I'm missing. Rock's Totem, but those are some things that it will increase the damage on. Not people, Jimmy. I know you can hear me. Not people. God, you guys have no idea how many times I've talked to this man about this. Death Hands. It makes you reload faster. There's not much to say about it. Uh, it's not really useful on a lot of people. It's definitely useful on Damba, Dredge. Um, it's probably about it. Uh, this used to be a meme card because you could buy it on champions that don't even reload. And I, I'm, I'm going to admit, when I first played Paladins, I thought that it'd make you throw axes faster as a Grover. So there, you, let, let the jokes out in the comments. Just, just let them go. I'll take it. I'll take it. I admit I made the mistake. I learned very quickly that it doesn't do anything, and I've wasted a lot of credits. Um, but on to the most important items probably in the game will be Cauterize and Wrecker. Cauterize will reduce uh, percentage of healing for 1.5 seconds uh, when you shoot an enemy. Very important uh, because there's a lot. There's definitely a lot of potent supports in this game, and you don't want to see the enemy in our at 1 HP step under a beam and nobody on your team has caught a right side it's probably the scariest thing you will see uh, record this will increase the amount of damage you do to shields there are rumors that this is getting nerfed I really hope it does because some tanks are just flat out useless end game when it comes to record 3 or even record 2 sometimes so hopefully they do they do nerf it a little bit not too much because I don't, I don't think it needs that big of a nerf but a little bit um, but yeah it just increases the damage due to shields Shields, Jimmy. Shields, not people. All right. Um, but that's it for the item shop. Um, but one little thing about the item shop. Obviously, you can see different items cost different amounts of credits. Obviously, the higher 
credit items are the more important, most more used ones. The lower ones are the more niche, less used ones because they're very situational. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for the item shop and the credit wise. But uh, yeah, on to the next thing. And that will be ultimates, right? Ultimates are your champion's strongest ability. Unlike your other abilities, they can not kill off cooldown. Like, I mean, they can, but they don't have a cooldown, right? So, for example, um, Fire Spin, 8 seconds. Your ult doesn't come up every 8 seconds. If it did, I would not play this game because that is outright uh, dumb. So, as you can see, I'm popping my ult. And Drogo's ult will literally one-shot an enemy. And before you say, wow, that's broken. There's obviously ways to counter it. Um, it's not just a, you know, uncounterable ult. But there are ways to counter it. Obviously, different champions have different ults. Some ults are kill ults. Some ults are de defensive. Uh, some are engaging ults. Stuff like that. And some are even reveals, right? Or blinds. And so each ult has a different use. Different ultimate, you know, ultimate charge rate. So play champions, test them out, see what they all do. But that's basically what it is. It's your strongest ability. And you charge it up by healing, doing damage, things of that nature. But just, I guess, playing the game and playing it correctly... I guess, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's ultimate. Huh. Um, but now, a really big part of the game, it, it's the game mode, the competitive game mode that you play in ranked and you play in uh, PML, PPL. I don't know what the Oceanic League's called. There's Brazilian League as well. You guys should also check those out. They're very important, and you got to support our over-the-seas brothers. Um, but, um, yeah, the game mode. The only game mode that is competitive competitive for paladins right now it's called siege and siege there are two teams of five uh those two teams will fight over a capture point on a symmetrical map to unlock a payload uh, once the payload is unlocked the team who has it under their control will be able to push it to the enemy's base once it gets there if they push it all the way in they'll get a point um i forgot to say you get a point for capturing it in the first place so basically the maximum amount of points you can get in one round is two points right um if you fail to push it um, the enemy team will get a point, so that will equal to both teams having a point. Um, so you get a you get a offensive point for getting the pay, for unlocking the payload, and you can also get a defensive point for defending, and you can get one for pushing it all the way in. Uh, defensive points, uh, you cannot win the game off of defensive points. So once your team has three points, you can no longer get defensive points. You will have to win off in an offensive point, whether it be capturing. Uh, the thing or pushing the payload obviously if you're at three you need to you want to capture it you're done um but yeah um yeah um keep in mind this is not tdm it's siege this uh, so you're not prioritizing kills kills are nice uh but what you really want to focus on is map control and survivability um and what i mean by by that is holding important areas for your team so you're not getting flanked or you're not getting poked out um also when i say survivability i don't just mean hide behind corners it's m more so of a saying as how like staying alive as long as you as long as you can because existing and just your pure presence will do a lot for example champions like makoa them being alive just it's a constant threat of just winning a team fight by himself because he has Probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest abilities in the game, which is the hook. And you will be seeing a lot of that <laughs> as well when you get into the game. Um, but yeah, those are two big keys to success. Map control and surviving. Now on to the last thing that I'm going to say in this video. And that is going to be about the stat line. And I know you Call of Duty, FPS gods. I went 22-0, but we still got 4 0 What the hell happened? Well, maybe you can blame it on your team. Maybe your team did suck. But majority of the time, um, you KDA players, <clears throat> you know who I'm talking about. Um, you guys think a lot more about kills instead of impact. And that is a, a big mistake because you can have somebody on your team who gets zero kills, a support, but they have a huge impact in the game. Their ults are perfect. They're making calls. They're calling rotations. They're healing the right people when they need to. They're letting people know where to go, stuff like that, you know? Um, but even though they're not getting kills and doing a lot of damage, they're, they still have a high impact on the game. 
Uh, you can have somebody who has massive damage. They get 200k damage, but they may have cauterize. They're not killing nobody. They're just getting healed up and feeding ult charge, you know? Or you can get somebody who, you can have a flanker who's just bullying the Drogos in spawn, but your team's getting 4v5. And even though you're like, oh, wow, how are we losing 4v5? Maybe the comp is built, your, your comp is built around, you know, it's built weird and you need to help your team out a little more or your team just needs a little bit more help. Um, so just focus a little more on having the mentality of how can I help my team win this team fight instead of how can I make my stat line look pretty. You will get a lot farther if you think that way. Um, that will be that, that will be it for this video actually I don't have any more notes uh, I'm definitely going to make more on specific role, like you know videos of specific roles maybe even do like an overview of a map and just kind of point out like what's the off lane what are what are off lanes you know what are important high ground stuff like that I don't know leave, leave, leave comments tell me what you guys want to see and I'll work on it uh, I'm not the best at creating videos but you know I love this game and I want it to, to prosper and I know some of you new players really want to learn, so I'm going to try my best. Um, but hopefully I can see you champions in the realm in the future. If not, I'm sorry. If you quit the game, don't quit the game. It's a beautiful game. Uh, but with that being said, Jaja -ja Power, have fun, keep feeding. And this is your boy Apache, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.